We are interested in solving polynomial and rational inequalities in this lecture. Let's begin with polynomial inequalities. So what I have here on the screen is the general form of uh, any inequality. f of x is a function, but we are going to just focus on polynomials in this section. Now the inequality symbols we are interested in, remember there are five inequality symbols if we count not equal to as an inequality, but our focus is on these four types of inequalities, less than, greater than, less than or equal, greater than or equal to. Now anything that we do uh, in this lecture works just as good with any one of these four inequalities. But most of illustrations we may use less than or equal or just less than. But again, the work that we do works with all four types of inequalities. So let's actually take a look at an example, best way to illustrate how this is going to work. So let's say I have this quadratic inequality. You're making this thing up. And right there. And we want to find the solutions to x so that uh, the left side is greater than zero. In other words, it's going to be positive, right? Anything greater than zero, that means we're interested in positive values of that expression. Now, uh, a couple of things that uh, has to be in place before we can do this. We got to have zero on this side to the right of inequality. This must be a zero. And the reason for that is because the way we... Uh, logically think about this process how it's going to work out it only works what we're about to say when there is a zero on that side and the other thing that's important is on the left side we have to have the factored form of the polynomial now our factored form uh, that means we got to recall our factoring skills right and uh, so the typical factoring that we do for quadratic expressions is we possibly set it up as product of two binomial factors and these binomial factors uh, i'm going to go with 2x for the first term and x second term first term in the second binomial two numbers multiply to negative three and the oi combination in foil or distributive property has to give me negative five so for this one, it turns out to be 1 and negative 3. Again, the product, 2x squared, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So you get the first, last terms. Here's the O, there's the I. Out, outer, inner terms, outside, inside terms. So that would be negative 6x plus x. So it gives you the negative 5x that we need in the middle term. Now once we have the factor to form, what we need to do is we're going to set each factor equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to have 2x plus 1 equals 0, and then x minus 3 equals 0. And once each factor is set equal to 0, we can solve. These are simple linear equations, so we can solve them. Isolate x, and this is what we get. All right, now the next step, then once we have these, which we call the zero of the polynomial function, we're going to actually draw this in number line. Okay, so this is a number line, and uh, this is actually what we're drawing for is the possible values of the function. Now, uh, here's my reference point zero. So we're going to locate negative one half, and we're going to locate three. And because at negative one half we get exactly zero for this expression, I'm going to make that an, and turn that negative one half value into an open circle on the number line because we want positive. We don't want it to be equal to zero. Had there been an equal sign here, that would be a different story. Then we'll turn this into a solid dot or a filled circle. Same thing at three. We're going to turn that into an open circle. Again, the significance of the open or closed circle. Open circle means the point itself is not part of the solution. Whereas closed or solid circle means it is included as part of the solution. Now, once we have that, we need to choose our test point, TP, test point. And for test point, we're going to choose easy numbers. The test point is any point of your choosing. The only things that we cannot choose are these numbers because we've already have them. 
And the purpose of a test point is to tell us the sign, the sign of the function, whether the function is positive or negative. So I'm going to let my test point be the easy, simple, easy point zero. And at this point, you just do f at zero, evaluate the function at zero, and I get, uh, and I usually go to the factored form, uh, because for values other than zero, I have to evaluate that whole expression, which I don't want to. So I'm looking at the factored form here, okay, this one. Zero will make two times zero plus one, the first factor. And zero makes zero minus three, that would be the second factor. And of course, two times zero plus one is just one by negative three, and that is negative three. We don't care so much about the magnitude of the number negative three, rather the sign on the uh, polynomial or on the function. So this tells me that any number, any test point between negative one half and three will result in a negative product in the factored form, or if you plug it into the original function, it will make it negative. So just to show you this one time, I'm going to do f at one f at 1, now it's going to be 2 times 1 plus 1, 1 minus 3, that's 3 times negative 2 and negative 6, there you go. See, no matter what I pick, as long as it's between negative and half and 3, I'll get a negative uh, product in the factored form. So that's the significance of minus, 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 minus symbols. The function will be negative. Uh, it will be negative in this segment of the number line. Okay, so let's... Now, uh, here's... And you will see me do this for the next segment because I need to pick a test point in here as well as in here to, uh, to span the entire number line. Okay, we're looking at the values of function, positive or negative, over its domain and remember, polynomial functions, domain is all real numbers. So my next test point, TP, I'm going to let X be, for instance, 5. Okay, so I'm looking at to the right of 3, X is 5. Now, because we don't care so much about digging the magnitude rather than the sign of the number, here's how I'm going to test it, which will make this go a little faster. So I'm going to plug in 5 into... Again, the factored form. This is what we're looking at. Now, the first factor is 2x plus 1. When you plug in a 5 into that, let me again do this one time so you can see it. So I went ahead and plugged in a 5 into the factored form. Here you're welcome to evaluate this and find out exactly what the value of the function is, whether it's positive or negative. But here's what I like to do. I'm going to say 2 times 5, 10 plus 1 is 11, right? So I'm going to ditch 11 and just keep the sign on that factor. 5 minus 3 is 2, positive 2. You remember, I care only about the sign on these factors. So I'll be multiplying a positive times positive when I choose x to be 5. The result's going to be a positive, right? So that will determine the next set of signs in that segment of the numbered line. See, I put plus, plus, plus on the right side here. You see right in here, above 3, I put plus, plus, plus. Again, what does that mean? I picked 5, you pick 7, somebody else picks 1,000. doesn't matter. As long as we pick a number above 3, we all will have positive values of the function. Okay, let's go into the negative segment. Now I'm going to choose my test point uh, to be negative 3. You could have something totally different as long as it's below negative a half. Now with negative 3, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to look at the sign on the factor again. 2x plus 1. Okay, so I'm looking at this factor. 2x plus 1, when you plug in negative 3, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, plus 1, negative. When you plug in negative 3 in here, negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. Again, throw away the number, keep the sign, and that's what I have. So I will be multiplying a negative times negative number, which again makes it positive. Therefore, uh, in 
in the left segment of the number line I also have plus 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 all right and and there we go so we have marked our number lines with these sequences of plus and minuses now notice by the way you may have noticed that how the signs alternate from positive to negative to positive like that and the question might be well will that always happen will there be a, a change in sign or as we say the signs will alternate once we hit those zeros of the function zeros are negative a half and three remember we talked about zeros of function in section 3.3 so will that happen the question is um, yes and no yes in that if you don't have a factor that is repeated with even multiplicity an even multiplicity again repeated factors with even multiplicity it will not alternate the sign necessarily okay and I'll show you an example of that but unless you have repeated factors then then you would expect this pattern of plus minus plus or minus plus minus something like that so what is the solution then now remember we're looking for positive right we want the function to be positive the value of the function is positive in this segment and in this segment of the number line all right and then we can actually write now the corresponding solution in interval notation the interval notation is from negative infinity up to negative one half the function is positive and I'm over here we're gonna union that with means or it's gonna be positive in that segment right anywhere from three to infinity so that would be the solution in interval notation now once we have the solution here I'm going to actually uh, graph this thing for you because um, we can also do this by graph but usually I don't like working them on the graph uh, because that's just additional steps and question maybe well do I know how to graph this thing so unless I know what the graph looks like then this isn't going to help me so for the problem that we just did this is going to be the graph of the function that we just went through negative one half is here and three is in here okay now we did mention that um, we want the function to be positive right right in here we're looking for positive value of the function well on the on this graph where are the positive values of the function well the part of the curve or the graph that sits above the uh x axis that's when y is positive right so let me i don't know what happened to my parabola and there redrew it so i'm just going to highlight the positive portion of the graph that would be this part right this that sits above the x axis so that's positive sorry about that uh, I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, there. Okay. So I'm looking for positive portions of the graph. That would be this portion right here. And the other portion would be right here. Right? So we can get a, a visual solution this way. And the part that sits below the x-axis would be negative, so we don't want that. Therefore, from the graph, we can see it's going to be from negative infinity to negative a half. That's this portion. And it would be from 3 to infinity. Remember, for these intervals, we look at the interval along the x-axis. Okay? We look at the value of the function on the y-axis, but the answer is actually the... Uh, to the solution is in terms of x so we look at the x-axis all right and there you go so that's the complete solution to this graph i um, mean to this uh, quadratic inequality and uh, one last thing is the graph is actually a continuous graph and there are no circles on the graph it's just the reason i need this circle is because the inequality was greater than it did not have the equal sign in it is for that reason okay so there you have it <clears throat> let's take a look at another example here
Okay. So this next example uh, I made up, I have something that, um, now suppose I have a polynomial that is in factored form. So I went ahead and actually uh, made up a factored form of a polynomial here. Okay, so for this one, uh, the factored form of the polynomial, let's go x plus 4, x minus 3 squared, and x minus 5. So I want you to note that I have a repeated factor with even multiplicity of 2. So with this one, I'm trying to clarify what I said earlier, that will this plus minus pattern we see uh, on the number line, will that always be the case? Now for this one, I'm going to go with greater than or equal this time. So before, what did I go with? Oh, I went to greater than. Let's actually I don't know, change that. How about if I make that less than or equal? So it's not always the same inequality. Let's see. Again, we're going to begin by looking at what makes each factor zero. And negative four makes this one, three the next one, and five the next one. Notice 3 has multiplicity of 2 because it's a repeated factor. But as far as the number line is concerned, we're just going to draw it on the number line as a single 3. That's all. So here's my reference on the number line. Uh, that would be 0. Negative 4 is here. Let's say 3 is here. And 5 would be here. All right. And let me extend my number line. So... Because we have equal sign at negative 4, we have solid circle or filled circle or closed circle. And what does that mean? At 3, for instance, at 3, we're going to get 0 less than or equal to 0. Because 3 makes this factor 0, which times the other two factors would be 0, the product. And this is a true statement. 0 is not less than itself, but it is equal to, and it has to do with the way we say this, 0 less than or equal that or part means one or the other condition must be met so therefore at three we get a true statement that's why we have solid circles now let's look at the sign between these numbers the sign on the function remember this is the sign on the function <coughs> so uh my test point i'm gonna go again x equals zero this point as long as it's not uh, one of these zeros you can pick any test point so I'm gonna pick one here I'm gonna pick one here that's my current one so these are my test points right I'm gonna choose a zero here I'm gonna choose four here I'm gonna choose ten negative five here so when x is zero my test point I'm going to the factors right zero plus four that factor will be a positive factor 0 minus 3 squared becomes positive. Remember the number, I don't care about the number. 0 minus 5, negative 5. Again, throw away the number itself. Keep the sign on the number. So with that choice test point of 0, I would be multiplying a positive from the first factor. So I'm positive by, from the second and negative by the third factor. The whole product is going to be negative, right? So I'm going to have minus, minus, minus like that. All right, and then uh, my next test point is going to be 4. So let's try when x is 4 now, my next test point. With 4, 4 plus 4, positive. Again, I'm looking at the factored form with all my test points from left to right. 4 minus 3 squared would be positive. 4 minus 5, negative. So I'm multiplying positive by positive by negative, and I get negative. So notice here, the sign did not change at this point. I did not alternate from negative to positive. Let's go test point. I pick 10 just to show you. You can pick any number as long as I don't uh, compute it. I don't even need a calculator, by the way, if you noticed. First factor, 10 plus 4, that's going to be positive. 10 minus 40, and the middle is always positive because you're squaring it. And 10 minus 5, that factor is positive. The product would be positive. So now it's actually going to alternate. So this is the takeaway from this work. If you have a repeated factor, okay, so this is my repeated factor here because it's squared. With even multiplicity, the signs will not alternate, 
right? They not they will not alternate around that zero. And then they will alternate if the exponent is odd. Now for let's do one last test point. I'm gonna do the negative five here. So my x is negative five for that test point. I'll be doing negative five plus four, that's negative. The middle factor square you get positive. Negative five minus five, negative, and negative by positive by negative, the product would be negative. Again, all we're saying is that the function will be negative here, the function is positive here, function is negative, function is negative. That's the significance of these uh, numbers, the signs, I should say. All right, and at negative five, so what did I get? Negative, oh, sorry, negative time, negative is positive, not negative. I'm sure you all caught that one. I overlook things sometimes because I'm writing, talking, thinking, looking at everything, and thinking about life in general. So occasionally I get sidetracked, but there you go. As long as I catch it, it's okay, right? <laughs> And there you have it. So we got our uh, sign chart, as we call this. So remember, um, we have positive, negative, negative, positive. And what are we looking for? For less than or equal zero means negative. That is why uh, I said it's important to have zero on that side. Because if it's zero, then we just think about the left expression as being positive or negative. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. So, for example, if I say f of x is less than 10, does that mean f of x is positive or negative? Well, it could be either. What if f of x is 5? Then it's positive. What if f of x is negative 2? Then it could be negative, and that is a true statement. So, this, so a number other than 0 wouldn't be able to do this, what we're doing. So, less than 0, negative. And the negative segments of the number line are here and in here, right? The other positive segments we don't want. Therefore, what is the solution? The solution runs from negative 4 to 5, actually, right? Because, again, there is no transition at 3. Everything works. So this would be the final solution for this one. Um, hopefully it's this isn't too complicated where you can follow the work it's relatively easy the key is to have the zero and the factored form okay and, and that was the whole thing let's do another one and this one will will go very quickly again just to practice another example here in this example let's say um, i'm going to go with the factored form 2x minus 1 5x minus 9 and x minus 4. Remember, we could graph these functions, but you can see there's really no need to extend this beyond what it what it is and it make it overly difficult. All right, so set each factor equal to 0 and see what makes each factor 0. Those are the numbers that I get. This time you're looking for negative products, right? Just going to go to the number line, and here's again my point of reference, zero. Uh, the numbers are one half, let's make that one half, nine fifths. Again, the spacing is an equal spacing, I just want to make sure that we have enough ample space for the sides to differentiate between these zeros. All right, now less than, there's no equality in here, right? So I'm going to have open circle, open circle, open circle. Because at those points, you get exactly zero, and we're saying it cannot be equal to zero, see? It should be less than zero. And hence the open circles. Now once I have that one, then we can actually move to our uh, test points, right? We can do that one. Now our test points uh, for this one, I'm just going to, because I have, uh, I don't have a repeated factor with even multiplicity. So I'm actually going to uh, cut this one short somewhat and show you how quickly you can do this. My test point, x0. I'm only going to choose one test point, 0 here. 
So the first factor, 2 times 0 minus 1, negative. Middle factor, 5 times 0 minus 9, negative. 0 minus 4, negative. Remember, I don't care about the numbers, only the sign on the numbers. So it would be negative product. That means the function will be negative here, right? So I'm going to go minus, minus, minus symbol. Now, because again, there are no even multiplicities on the factors, then I'm going to take it on my own to alternate these. And you're welcome to pick test points uh, in here, here, and in here, just to verify that the signs will indeed turn out to be what they are. And there we have this one. So what is the solution? We want negative answers. Well, the negative segments on the number line are going to go from, remember, negative infinities on the left, positive infinities to the right of the number side. So I'm going to go from negative infinity up to one half parentheses, union means or, nine fifths, all the way to four and it stops at four not including and remember for infinity both positive and negative infinity any solution involving those you put parentheses on them regardless of whether it's less than or equal greater than or equal the equality doesn't mean anything here because when i say it's negative infinity i'm not giving you a number am i when i say the number is infinity did i tell you what that number is no that means just very large unbounded so it can be as large as you want it to be. And there we have it. Okay, <clears throat> so that example, notice how fast, by the way, that one went relative to the first one that I did. What if the function, the polynomial function is not in factored form? Well, if it's not, then obviously we got to factor it, right? Because remember, this process works when we have zero on the right side and the factored form on the left side. So we're going to do that. Let's take a look at this example next. Our next example is going to be a fourth degree polynomial. And for this one, I'm going to go x to the fourth, negative x cubed minus 10x squared negative 8x we'll make that greater and equals zero all right let's see how we're going to do this now in order to find zeros of this polynomial because remember zeros lead to factored form we talked about the rational zero theorems right so when we talk about uh rational zeros here uh let me Okay, so let's do a rational zero theorem. Again, if you need more review for rational zero theorems, please take a look at uh, my video from, uh, let's see, rational zeros. That would be uh, section 3.3. .3. Section 3.3, .3, we talked about what I'm about to do here. So to do the rational zero theorem, we need to uh, first make sure that... Um, we take the GCF out, so the polynomial should actually have integer coefficients, right? Integer coefficients um, with the constant term other than x. It's got to be a number. Right now, see, I don't have a constant term. It stops at 8x. So with this, I can actually factor the x out, couldn't I? That's the GCF. That makes this x cubed negative uh, x squared negative 10x minus 8 greater than or equal zero now once we have this now this is amenable to uh, rational zero theorems so we're going to go p and q p is going to be all factors of the constant um, which is plus minus one plus minus two plus minus four plus minus eight and q is going to be all factors of the leading coefficient in this case one plus minus one now when we do the ratio of p over q because you're dividing all of these numbers by one you get them all back so the ratio is going to be plus minus one plus minus two exactly what they were for p so th if this if this function has any rational zeros irrationals we don't know but if they're rational it has to be among this uh, distinguished list of integers
So I'm going to try negative one here, and we're going to do a synthetic division. The coefficient on the cubic polynomial, the third degree polynomial, are one negative one, negative ten, negative eight. Bring down the one, multiply, we get negative one. Negative one and negative one makes negative two. Multiply, add, multiply and add. And we are hoping, of course, right, to get a zero here. And, uh, and we did. That means if the remainder is zero, means x minus, uh, means negative one is a solution, right? So the solution is negative one, which if you move x to the other side, you get x plus one equals zero. So x plus one is a factor. So, so far I can write this as x, x plus one. Now continue on, um, at this point, by the way, because we had a third degree, once we get to the third row in a synthetic division table, the degree of this expression, this is going to be a second degree polynomial. And once we reach the second degree, we actually, um, or actually, hold on. Yeah, uh, once we get to a second degree, then we can, um, what you call it? we can use factoring to do this, right? So this is x squared minus 2x minus 8. The factored form of this, I'm going to go x minus 4, x plus 2. No need for synthetic division. Or you can go through trial and error and see which of these works. <coughs> so I get two solutions here, x is 4 or negative 2. You see that? And once we have these two solutions, again, those will lead into factored forms, x plus 2, x minus 4. The factored form will be opposite of the solutions. If it's 4, x is 4, then factored form has got to be x minus 4, as you can see right here. All right. Now, once we have this one, we are back to something like previous examples I've been doing. And what do I need to do next? I can form my number line and for this one let's say i have negative two negative one zero four true and these will divide up the number line into one two three four five segments we are looking for greater than zero means positive right so we are looking at positive segments of the number line here so where do we get positive segments well my test points oh and because equals zero equality is in there then i can actually put solid circles here okay because equality is there and uh, now we can proceed with our test points i don't have repeated factors of even multiplicity like two four six like that just going to go with a test point right here. Okay, my test point, I'm going to let x be 10. Large numbers, uh, easier for me to check. So I'm, I'm going to plug in 10 in here, 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 and here. Okay, so plug in 10 for x. Clearly, that's 10, right? That means the number is positive. The factor is positive. 10 plus 1 makes that factor positive. The next one positive. 10 minus 4, 6 makes that positive. The product of four positive factors will lead to a positive. So that means the function is positive there. You see how that worked? Okay, and then I can put plus, 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 plus like that here. And then once I hit these other numbers, I'm going to make them alternate. Plus, plus, plus minus 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 plus 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 like that see how that works <clears throat> and there you have it so we have uh, segmented the number line this way what are we looking for again positive segments so the solution is going to go from negative infinity to negative 2 right that is positive the next segment is here union negative 1 to 0 and union 4 to infinity that would be the segment here all right and there we have it the final solution if things are in factored form this moves very quickly 
think that's probably enough um, polynomial inequalities. Let's take a look at now uh, maybe a couple of examples of rational inequalities and see how they differ or how similar are they to polynomials. So we're looking at now rational inequalities. Now the process is going to be the same process. Okay, remember, we wanted zero on the right side, we still want to have zero on the right side, because the way we go about um, rationalizing about how the solution should be. There you go. So let's say I have this one. And in this example, it's a simple example. Again, this is a must, you have to have zero there. And these polynomials, these will be polynomials because we're looking at rational inequalities by definition. The expressions on top and the bottom must be polynomials. So because these are polynomials, they have to be in factored form. And in this case, I have factored form, 2x plus 3, there's nothing I can do. I can think of that as a whole binomial factored, right, of 2x plus 3. Okay, so how are we going to do this? Well, we're going to go right to uh, what we did before. We're going to see what makes 2x plus 3, 0, the top. Well, x would be negative 3 halves. That's one of the numbers on the number line. We're going to see what makes the bottom 0. x minus 5, 0, so x is 5. And remember, in a fraction, the denominator cannot be 0, right? So this is actually the domain of this function. It exists everywhere except at 5. At 5, there's nothing there. There's a hole in the graph, if you will. So, uh, the reason the function doesn't exist at 5 again is because of division by 0. So, it doesn't matter whether this is equal to or not, the inequality. We can, it cannot. It cannot override the fact that we cannot divide by 0. So, I'm going to go to my number line. And on the number line, I'm going to have, um, of course, this is going to be, uh, let's see, my point of reference is zero. So this is negative three halves. It's going to be solid circle. The numerator in a fraction is okay to be zero. It's just the denominator cannot be zero. Okay, and the other one was five and five. We have open circle at five there. And we're going to proceed just like before. Pick a test point like 0. So my test point, TP, is x equals 0. In the numerator, I'm going to have 2x, 2 times 0 plus 3 is positive. In the denominator, 0 minus 5 is negative. The ratio will be negative. So this is going to give me negative, 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 negative like that. And the rest will be positive 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 like that see how that works so it goes fairly quickly as long as we have zero and factored form it's just like the other one polynomials but we gotta gotta be mindful remember denominator can never be zero so you always have open circle in the denominator so what is the, the solution let's see we're looking at less than or equal zero so for less than means we're looking for now negative right negative ratios well where can i get negative ratios is only in that segment therefore the solution to this is going to be from negative three halves up to five and there we have that one see how that worked okay <clears throat> let's take a look at another example this next example uh this will be our last example in this next and last example i'm going to do a rational inequality and in question maybe but well, what if there is no zero on the right side and it's not in factored form well we have to make both of those happen <clears throat> initially remember the domain x cannot be 4 makes this 0 and x cannot be 1. So I already know on my number line, the number line, I have two open circles, right? One would be at 1, the other one is at 4. Okay, so those we know already. Now, 
<coughs> let's create a zero as far as the uh, the priority here we don't want to have factored form and not and something that's not zero zero has priority over factored form so don't factor it too soon first create a zero or like that just simply move this fraction to the other side or if it's a number move the number to the other side so this is a must that takes precedence over factored form now we need to combine the fraction and for this one we do got to do a little bit of algebra here the lcd is 4 minus x 1 minus x so i'm gonna have to build each fraction to the lcd <clears throat> multiply top bottom of the first one by 1 minus x this is 1 minus x multiply top bottom of the second one by 1 minus x and there you have it and because i'm building i'm not multiplying both sides by something i don't need to worry about the other side nor changing the direction of inequality in case i had multiplied by negative that i'm not aware of because i don't know what x is okay let's combine using the lcd and there is the factored form of the denominator you see how that worked now what about the numerator in the numerator i'm going to distribute three and distribute negative six to four and negative x so i get negative 24 plus 6x greater than equals zero all right and there we have it now i need to combine like terms and when i combine like terms i get 3x minus 21 on top over uh, i'm just gonna say over the denominator okay and let's factor the numerator i get three times x minus seven this so i'm going to actually write the denominator because i'm done factoring the top and the bottom so this is actually now the whole expression see this is what we should have and again to reiterate notice i have zero and i have factored form both of those must be in place now once they are then i can do my routine here let's see and up here remember um x may not be one or four we excluded those right off the bat because those are not in the domain of this irrational function so let me redraw that line here let's say here's my zero this is going to be one right which was open circle at four i had open circle now what makes one minus x zero x is one but remember x cannot be one so we have open circle at one what makes the other factor zero in the denominator the other factor is four minus x x four makes that zero right but we've already accounted for it and x cannot be four so we've done that and the only thing that remains is a factor in the numerator we're going to set the numerator equals zero and we get x is seven and once x is seven and here is seven now will seven be open circle hollow or closed well because we have equal sign and numerator may may be zero we'll turn that seven into a solid circle so that's what decides whether the circles are open or closed equality is going to be closed in a rational function only in the numerator notice i have equality but open circle it doesn't it doesn't matter what this wants i cannot divide by zero so open circle takes precedence over uh what the inequality is trying to show perfect and again i don't have in my factored form i don't have repeated 
uh, multiplicity factor with repeated um, even multiplicity so I would expect the signs to alternate now uh, let's do our test point we're gonna go easy on ourselves we're gonna pick zero as our test point and I'm gonna look at in this fraction going into that with a zero so we're gonna do three times zero minus seven is negative four minus zero positive and one minus zero is positive notice three doesn't matter here because i'm not finding the exact value of the function i just want the sign so you can ignore the three the ratio of negative to positive times positive that's going to be negative right and uh, negative means function is negative so this segment would be negative and once we hit these numbers the zeros of the rational function we alternate the signs and there you have a complete sign chart here and what are we looking for we're looking for greater than zero here right greater than zero means positive and we get positive here and in here on the number line therefore the solution to this uh, example is going to be one comma four union bracket seven means seven itself is fine to infinity and we always have infinity uh, parentheses on both flavors both types of infinities be it positive or negative infinity and there we have it so again here's a case where we have a complete uh, example of a problem that I didn't have zero and I did not have factored form and there you have it so with that we are done with this lecture I hope again you find these useful and as always thank you for watching